Listen, if you're watching a fantasy football video in July, you've heard of all of these players. Probably in some dynasty leagues, you know the rookie class, but your idiot league mates probably haven't. So today, we're talking about six must-draft players in fantasy football this year that your idiot league mates probably haven't heard of. Maybe, you know, maybe on Sports Center once, but they for damn fucking sure ain't drafting them in fantasy football this year. And most of the players on this list are going to be rookies or sophomores, right? They have to be young in order for them not to have heard about them and for them to be impactful in fantasy football. If they're a fucking third year player in the league and your friend hasn't heard about them, then probably need to change the title of this video to something a little bit more uh, less politically correct. But none the more, we shall move on and hit this list of six must draft players that your idiot league mates have never heard of you know what we got to do next got to tuck our shirts in stop yelling let's see first dude up on this list Jalen Tolbert the wide receiver for the Dallas Cowboys he is a rookie the reason that your league mates have never heard of him is because he's a rookie that came out of South Alabama. And this is a guy I've been yelling about all offseason. I love this dude. I made a video like two weeks ago or a week ago uh, talking about how he's easily one of the best late round sleepers targets, however you want to fucking dichotomize this shit. And then literally the next day, this report came out. OK, so Tolbert's going to be a player on the Cowboys this year, despite being a rookie. He is just a really smooth all around type dude. There's nothing that he doesn't do well on the football field. I don't know if you can necessarily say he excels at anything, but I think a lot of the time guys like, you know, I think he's very similar to Adam Thielen. And most of the time when you have a guy that, you know, you think doesn't really excel at anything per se, they typically end up doing so once they're on the football field. It's easy to scout them and say, like, he's just smooth all around, doesn't do anything great. But then once they get in the game, it's either maybe they're great at contested catches and tight spaces and the end zone, like all those kind of things. And I think that'll show itself uh, when it comes to Jalen Tolbert. So we've got Amari Cooper gone. We've got Michael Gallup likely ending up on the pup list. This is an offense that runs at a pace that would scare Jamaican long distance runners. This is an offense that throws the ball more than Peaky Blinders throw fucking horse race. It's kind of similar to the argument you would make for Gabriel Davis, where it's like the rising tide of the offense helps everybody involved that's actually getting an opportunity, and Tolbert's clearly going to get an opportunity, right? The floor is very high because of the situation that they find themselves in. Pass first, very fast pace. The pass rate is very high. Tolbert should get a ton of targets off the rip. Love him this year. Your teammates won't know about him. Neither will they when it comes to Sky Moore, whose line on prize picks right now is 650, I believe, or 675. That's an easy smash on the over for me when it comes to Sky Moore's season-long receiving yardage prop. Just a reminder, our season-long draft guide is available for pre-order. It goes live on August 1st. You can go cop it at bdge.co. But the easiest and cheapest way for you to get it is to go to prizepicks.com. Use promo code BDGE when you deposit $10 or more, and we will email it over to you. The season-long draft guide has my big board of 200 players in both super flex and one quarterback leagues. It has my must draft list, the official fade list. It's got sleepers, overvalued, undervalued, all that type of shit that you need to prepare for your fantasy football drafts. We even got Mr. Noah Moore parties contributing to it this year, which I'm super excited about. So go check it out, prizepicks.com. Link to go to go grab their app is in the description. Use promo code BDGE when you do so. Mr. Sky Moore, why won't they know Sky Moore? Well, he's a 5'10", 190-pound rookie wide receiver out of Western Michigan. Why they need to know him, why you need to know him, why you need to draft him is he is the Kansas City Chiefs' second-round pick this year, all right? Terry Kill is gone. This depth chart is fucking blown open. The uh, Miko Hardman is the only player that remains from last year on this depth chart. There's 267 wide receiver targets open for the taking. And Sky Moore is is here to fucking jump out the sky and take what is his, and it's those damn targets, all right? Y'all could yell about Juju and yell about MVS and yell about Miko Hardman and yell about all these dudes that have proven over and over and over and over and over again that they're not the guys, okay? They continue to do it, and then we continue to do it. But no mas. Sky Moore is here. Give me the explosive receiver who might be undersized but is not just a slot guy, man. He could separate anywhere. 86th percentile versus man, 97th per zone, 91st versus press. I mean, he's another dark horse, I think, to lead this rookie group in receiving statistics this year. You obviously want some kind of wide receiver attached to Patrick Mahomes, and I'm not interested in the rest of them. But I am very interested in you hitting the thumbs up button and subscribing to the channel because we're about to hit on my man Khalil Herbert. Throw it up for fucking Khalil. Throw your K's up. Throw some fucking K's in the comment section if you are here for the Khalil Herbert anti-slander. Chicago Bears backup running back. He is arguably my favorite handcuff this year. He was legitimately 
awesome last year when he got the opportunity. When David Montgomery was out, we have this four game split. This dude was getting over 22 touches per game. That shows you how much the Chicago Bears already trust him, all right? In that span, he was top five in almost every rushing category. I'm talking about carries, yards, missed tackles forced, like all of it, all right? He was the only running back in the NFL last year to rush for more than 100 yards against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, there is a new coaching staff in town. David Montgomery is clearly the guy or has been up to this point. New coaching staff in town, changing the offense a little bit. I think this will open the door for Khalil Herbert. And if Khalil Herbert performs anything like he did last year, they will have no choice but to give him some carries and allow him to eat into David Montgomery's workload. Khalil Herbert feels admittedly a little bit more like Alexander Madison, except I think there's a chance that Herbert is actually better than David Montgomery as a pure runner. Is it a 90% chance? Fuck no. It's probably not a 50-50 chance either. But I mean, there's no chance that Madison is better than Dalvin Cook. But I think you can make the case that Herbert, from what he showed last year, can be just as talented as David Montgomery. So I love Khalil Herbert as a guy that he's like a 17th round pick when you don't have to pay for like the Madisons, the Pollards, who are handcuffed guys. Next up on this list, and hear me out on these guys, all right? We got two rookie running backs, Kennedy Brooks, running back for the Philadelphia Eagles, Oklahoma Sooner. And then we have Abram Smith, former Oregon player for the New Orleans Saints. These are definitely, listen, definitely not must draft player, but I had to use it for the title because that shit hits like Tyson in his fucking prime. So just pass the vibe check for me one time, YouTube comments, please. Abram Smith, Kennedy Brooks. These are two players that the, the overall theme of what I'm trying to say here is you need to have your sensors on very, very brightly, highly. You need the volume turned all the way fucking up, right? I want notifications on your phone for these guys' names. I don't know how to do it, but if we figure it out, let's do it together, y'all. Both of these guys are rookies. Even worse, both of them are undrafted rookies, okay? There is just as good of a chance that they don't even make the roster for these teams as it is that they make an impact this year in fantasy football. I will say some uh, some deep dive work from Noah of the, of the BDG team. These two guys, they got two of the three highest undrafted free agent deals for undrafted running backs since 2011 as it relates to like percentage of cap. Uh, they are the only undrafted free agent running backs since at least 2017 to get more than $200,000 guaranteed in their contracts. I personally like Kennedy Brooks a lot more than I like Abram Smith, just as a prospect profile type of guy. Came in at Oklahoma immediately off the rip, a thousand yards rushing as a true freshman, and then did it again, and then did it again while competing for touches with guys like Jalen Hurts and Kyler Murray at quarterback. Beat out Ramondre Stevenson, Eric Gray, some other talented running backs in the mix. He came in, collected his fucking bag, and got out. He's a smooth runner, a glider. Uh, I think he's very similar to Jordan Howard. Now, Philadelphia obviously has names in the backfield already, but Jordan Howard is gone. I think Kennedy Brooks' upside is taking that role. So we want to keep a very close eye on reports from these guys' camps. Abram Smith is a bit more of like a bruiser coming out of Oregon. Kind of similar running style a little bit, but I, I think he's more of a bruiser. And he's more of an interesting spot because he's on the Saints and... Alvin Kamara's suspension is kind of up in the air. We don't know what's going to happen there. But if he does miss time, they're going to need something in that backfield. Is it 35-year-old Mark Ingram? Why not just use the 22-year-old Mark Ingram and Abram Smith? They got Tony Jones Jr. who hasn't showed a shit. So I think there's a chance that he plays the early down, short yardage, goal line back as long as he performs well in camp and makes the roster, obviously, and then can kind of seize that role throughout the season. This is upside scenario. Again, long shot, but these two guys need to, as training camp reports start floating out next week, because that's when it's starting, training camp starts, we're going to start hearing names floating around. And if these guys' names start hitting the reports, they need to start hitting your rosters. If you're in a dynasty league, these guys are priority ads to your taxi squad or the bottom of your roster if you're in a larger roster league. And then throughout the summer, especially throughout throughout the preseason games, in our draft guide, which again, you cop through prizepicks.com, I do an update after every week of the preseason, talking about the snap counts with the first team, letting you know who the real starters are, letting you know the important takeaways, kind of cutting through all the buzz and the bullshit of that. That's an article exclusively in the draft guide, so make sure you cop that. Last guy on this list of the six players is Davis Mills, the quarterback of the Houston Texans. I know your fucking league mates probably know who Davis Mills is, but some of them might not. You know, it's the Houston Texans. Who gives a shit about them? Davis Mills was also a rookie last year. Came in and was arguably the second best rookie in this class last year after getting 0% of the hype pie going into last year, all right? If any of these other rookie quarterbacks were in this Houston Texans offense and performed terribly, we would write that off immediately, right? You write that off as the excuses of why they did so, right? We're doing it for Trevor Lawrence in Jacksonville, for Justin Fields in Chicago. Mills played well despite 
this as compared to the other guys. He had four top 12 finishes last year as a fantasy quarterback. I mean, he went 312 and three touchdowns versus New England. 310 passing yards, two touchdowns versus the Rams. These are really good fucking defenses. 331 and one versus Seattle, 254 and two versus the Chargers, 301 and three versus Tennessee. I mean, like the glimpses were definitely there, y'all. Bad weapons, bad O-line. It was his first year. How are you going to build chemistry there? Not even knowing you're the starting quarterback. Like nothing was working for David. They had the Cole Watson controversy really starting up last summer nothing was working in his favor and he still did pretty fucking well so i think he's worth drafting as he's a priority qb3 in super flex leagues this is not for one quarterback leagues by the way i only play in super flex leagues he's a priority quarterback three in super flex leagues or a risque quarterback two all right i'm not even opposed to waiting on it and having him as my qb2 in super flex leagues so that is today's video that is today's featured film we will be bike tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day so make sure you subscribe and make sure you go hit the fucking group chat and call your friends idiots because we'll be doing that all summer here so hit the thumbs up button we got six players your idiot league mates have never heard of that are must draft for y'all jalen tolbert sky moore khalil herbert kennedy brooks abram smith and davis mills i'm out of here i love you see you tomorrow Let's get wild. Let's get wild.